So these are the contents uh, that you're mainly uh, having a look at uh, in the current uh, deck. So the contents would be the fusion order to cache cycle overview and uh, what are all the components of the fusion order to cache and uh, how is the fusion order management architectured in the cloud. So the order to cache cycle. So a few phases in order to cycle cache, uh, order to cache cycle. So can anyone uh, give a, a briefing about uh, what order to cache is? All right, okay, fine. So uh, let us have a, a brief uh, view on what auto to cache cycle is. Okay. So this is how the fusion auto to cache cycle uh, looks like. So it starts with creation of order, and then we have scheduling the order, and then we have the reserving the sales order followed by picking the uh, pick releasing the sales order ship confirming and then the cash part typically we have an invoicing thing of it so the capturing sales will happen in the FOM cloud and the scheduling and reserving happens in the global auto promising cloud pick release and ship confirm happens in the inventory cloud and the cash part is handled in the financials cloud Okay, so when we are talking this as cloud, the very uh, important thing in cloud is all these are on different entities or different cloud, but yet there is a pre-built integrations that are provided by Oracle, which looks as though everything is as one uh, in one piece, though these different clouds are of different pieces. So that's how it works. So the capturing the sales order or the creation of the sales order happens in the FOM cloud which is a fusion order management cloud. And fusion order management cloud actually consists of few components like creation of sales order, distributed order orchestration which we call as do in fusion terminology. GOP or the global order promising cloud closely is, in, uh, is tied up with do it has a very tight integration with do but still it is sold as a separate license and any user uh, any client who wants to implement or use GOP has to sub purchase separate license for GOP so it doesn't come as part of the FOM cloud that's the reason we have taken we have uh, mentioned it as two, two different things and inventory cloud is a separate thing where you, we need to purchase licenses for all these things separately whereas the flow looks seamlessly integrated when we do end-to-end if we have all the licenses in place. All right, so <coughs> let's get back to the topic of Fusion uh, OEM. FOM Cloud, the main thing that we have in FOM Cloud is capture sales order. So in capture sales order, what all we can do is we can add items, we can configure items, uh, we can price the items, validate the, uh, validate validations can be of any sort we will have a look at it and then have a sales credit so all these kind of things can be done in the FOM cloud so that's how you capture the sales order so before we get in there uh, I would like to mention one point sales order capture was not available in fusion cloud before R11 so there was something called as a CPQ it is still available but orders were created through CPQ CPQ is um, a big machines earlier it was known as big machines and uh, it is both quoting and order creation solution uh, which Oracle has acquired and provided pre-built integration with the fusion order management so orders were not created in FOM cloud as such before that and all the orders came through CPQ into order management fusion order management so what you are seeing from R11 is we can directly create a sales order in FOM cloud uh, and still the pre-built integration of CPQ is valid so if you want if you have a solution on big machines or the CPQ cloud and you want to use that as a quoting solution and you want to bring that uh, bring orders from there you can definitely do that even today 
using the pre-built integration. However, you also have methods or mechanisms to integrate from different order capture systems. So when I say capture sales order here, it's mainly the order capture systems. So you can also get orders from other order capture systems into fusion order management if you want to use order management as a fulfillment system. So for that, we have different mechanisms uh, to how to get these orders into the fusion system, into the order management system. Okay, so that's the uh, FM cloud. So from R11, you have directly creating the sales orders in the FM cloud. So coming to the global order promising cloud. So global order promising cloud is a, uh, is a simple piece. GOP cloud. Uh, here we have uh, the schedule order as the next process after you create a sales order or capture the sales order. And uh, the main intention of scheduling the order is to generate a schedule ship date based on whatever criteria I have selected in the GOP cloud, it will generate a schedule ship date and a schedule warehouse. And the orders get scheduled uh, using the GOP engine. Next part what we have after the schedule is the reserve in which the items are reserved to just um, check whether we really have enough on hand quantity or uh, any other source to uh, meet the demand. So those kind of things should be handled by the reserve order. Coming to the inventory cloud, we have peak release and ship confirm as part of uh, inventory cloud. Though it is actually done by the model shipping, comes as part of the inventory cloud. And a peak release, the main important things that we have would be the peak release and the peak confirm. And a ship confirm, probably we can have the ship confirm and the pack items that we have as part of the ship confirm UI. So in the shipments UI, shipment here I mean is a delivery in terms of EBS terminology. So delivery, what you call delivery in EBIS is now called as a shipment in Fusion or the cloud terminology. So once the order is ship confirmed, we'll have, we can generate an invoice for it and uh, we run a schedule process provided all your AR setups are in place and uh, you run a uh, schedule process. So schedule process I think is a concurrent program in terms of EBIS which we also call as an ESS job, which is enterprise scheduler service. ESS job or a concurrent job or a, uh, all are same. I mean, they are different names, but the terminology based on which it runs is, uh, technology based on which it runs is different because we have the ADF framework in Fusion. When it comes to Fusion, it is completely ADF framework with SOA middle, um, middleware. Okay, so we run an ESS job and generate the invoice for it and after that the downstream flow continues of generating a receipt and then doing the bank reconciliation on all those things. So all that things happens in the AR cloud, financials cloud and more particularly in AR cloud. So this is how the order to cash cycle uh, works in a fusion environment. More or less as a business process perspective, it's the same or very much similar to what we have in ABIS. But how we get those things into the system, that's different, little different. Okay, okay, all right, uh, let's move on to the next slide. I hope you're able to see my screen. So these are the order to cash modules that uh, Oracle is providing. Uh, uh, and one of the things that is uh, needed is the product information management. This is the place from where the items come. And next what we have is a fusion order management is a place where we create uh, sales orders. Distributed order orchestration or do is the main uh, part of order management which orchestrates the orders or defines the, this is a place where we define the workflows or integrate order, order management with external systems, be it order capture systems or uh, order fulfillment systems, this is the place. And we have something called as fusion configurators. This is uh, similar to the configurators that we have in EBIS, which helps in uh, guided selling. And next we have uh, fusion pricing. Pricing, I guess, is uh, re-architectured in fusion when compared to EBIS. And this is the place where we uh, define the prices for items, at the same time the shipping charge list. So all these kind of things would be covered in the fusion pricing. And next we have the global order promising and uh, its relation with uh, respect to order management, how global order promising uh, works uh, in relation to order management. And then we have the fusion inventory, uh, fusion inventory for defining your uh, 
inventory orgs and then uh, assigning items to inventory orgs and then we have uh, fusion shipping and this is a place where we do the uh, pick pack ship uh, we have a new module called as fusion supply chain orchestration uh, this is not covered as part of this uh, course but uh, we have mentioned this because this is this plays a key role when it when you have uh, a back to back flow or an imt flow we have something called a supply chain orchestration and this module is the one which uh, gives an overview of what the supply is it tells it links the supply from a demand which comes in the form of a sales order or a transfer order supply chain orchestration would suggest or is the place where we get to know what from where we can get the supply so these are the different modules as part of your uh, order to cash in cloud so uh, so I think it's it's been an hour, I guess probably. Uh, in case if anyone of you, you know wants to wants a five minute or a ten minutes break, please uh, feel free to let me know on that part because I'll be going on with my presentations. In case anyone, I mean, if all of you agree for a five minute or ten minute break, please let me know on that part. Okay. All right. So uh, let's have a look at the uh, business uh, pain point. Like uh, uh, someone has asked earlier, like. Uh, why is GOP bifurcated from do and all right so why why do why do we need do I mean what's the main intention of uh, developing a product like do when we have uh, EBS or you know uh, something which we do not have in EBS why did we create a separate product like do so this this is a question uh, this is a business pain point probably that would answer the question of why do we have do so in a uh, huge uh, company or in a big client when it comes to that case they have multiple order capture systems coming from uh, multiple channels order uh, sales orders come from multiple channels and what could be the reason is for example uh, a huge client like let's say Dell or someone would have multiple uh, units in different countries and there is no centralized system so every country they will be handling on their own or the second case where people start acquiring other companies let's say there's a huge company and it acquired some other company and their order fulfilling system or their order capture system is something different so when these two companies come in coexistence though they fall under the same company they work in source so it doesn't know what happens with the other things main reason being they are tightly integrated the order capture system and the order fulfillment system maybe one is using SAP and the other one is using JD or whatever they could be working in tight integration with itself and when a new partner or when your new uh, client comes in it gets acquired when a new company gets acquired and uh, you have a different order of order capture system or you have a different order fulfillment system and that comes and sits as as a new module next to this so that is not brought into the existing system and it needs to work in silos so that is one of the biggest pain point that we have uh, uh, when you have a diverse systems diverse order of capture or diverse order fulfillment systems and there's a tight coupling between it to address this business point business pain point uh, they have come up with a solution called as do so the this slide explains like what the business uh, pain point is and uh, which says that you know in a current scenario on an average every company has around 4 to 4.5 order capture systems and 4 to 4.5 order fulfillment systems uh, main reasons being mergers and acquisitions multiple channels to market and complex supply chains So there is no centralized or a single piece of solution which can address, which can bring the optimized solution out of this order capture and order fulfillment systems. So to optimize and get the best efficiency of these things, we can combine all the existing order capture and order fulfillment systems. We can bring it under one thing, which we call it as a distributed order orchestration. Okay. So this is how uh, the uh, business pain point will be transformed to when you use do so here we we can have a look at this we have uh, it is i store we have Siebel order capture or commerce atg edi or atg whatever be the order capture system is the order capture system 
sends their data or uh, their or sales orders or their demand, whatever is it, to do in the form of a web service. So everything in cloud works mostly on web services. We do not have a database to database transfer or a kind of uh, database interfaces probably which we, which were developed in EBIS. Such kind of things would uh, are not uh, available here or not those features are not there here as far as integration features are concerned. Any module that needs to speak to do is in the form of web service. This is mainly built on the concept of service oriented architecture and SOVA mainly uses SOVA components or SOVA services to speak to any application. So I would like to tell a couple of points about SOVA. SOVA is, uh, is a middleware technology um, not specific to any company but SOVA in general is a middleware uh, thing that is used to enable in between any two applications. Uh, rather than uh, tight coupling. So the problem with tight coupling boils down again to the previous slide that we have seen, right? It's the same thing. So when we have tight coupling between two things, uh, two applications and there's a third application that comes in place, the entire uh, code needs to be written for integrating those three modules. So the simplest way to do is to use a SOVA solution. So the distributor order orchestration uses the SOVA solution for that. So irrespective of what your order capture system is or what your order fulfillment system is, you can use do. So in short, we can tell that this is, acts as an exchange between your order capture systems and the order fulfillment systems. So and for the communication, what we use is the web services. So uh, I think earlier in EBS there was something like the SOVA gateway through which we connect and not. So we are using do here. Okay, I uh, hope you're able to have a look at uh, this diagram. So this is a fusion order management architecture and uh, uh, begin uh, to begin with, uh, you can have, uh, you can see number one, which is the order import. So when it comes to order import, uh, we can import orders from any external systems. So that is what is uh, defined in A, or the leftmost one. Hope you're able to see that. So A is uh, what we, uh, we are talking as the external order capture systems and that's the reason it is put out of the complete uh, rectangular box uh, out of it saying that the order captures com can come from any external system. And the first thing that happens is the order import. And when we are talking about order import, uh, order import contains few things, something like a transformation rule, pre-transformation rule, product transformation rule and post transformation rules. So these are the three important things that fall as part of order import. So once any order comes from an external system that would be typically called as a source order. And one, it, once it comes to the system into the order management cloud we call it as a sales order. However, a sales order can be created within the order management cloud itself. Okay. And once I create an order it would be priced, the items present in the sales order would be priced using the pricing. So we have something called as a pricing engine which would do the pricing work for the order lines. And we have uh, order, conf uh, we have configurators uh, in working in parallel to the order uh, management system. So configurators is mainly used for this uh, CTO, P2O items where you need to have options or option classes, you need to pick uh, or configure your items then you can use the configurators thing and configurators would be the entry point where you start for your order entry in case you are having a CTO or PTO items. Okay, And once the sales order is created and it is transformed, it would be transformed into a, uh, a fulfillment line. So order would be transformed into fulfillment lines using your orchestration process. Now orchestration here which is in the middle is the main thing which tells what orchestration would do. Orchestration in the sense you can consider an orchestration process to be a workflow in EBIS. So what should I do with this order? When, when an order comes in, what should I do with this? Okay, so 
let's let's come from the beginning again. Once I create an order, a sales order in OEM Cloud, then there is something called as assign and launch. So this assign and launch tells to which orchestration process it should be mapped to. So there can be uh, any number of orchestra orchestration processes that are available, but based on the criteria that I define in the order import or the order creation, that criteria would boil down to one of the orchestration process and that filtering criteria or that mapping criteria you would define in your would be taken care by your SN and launch web service. So that takes care of the orchestration. Now once an orchestration process is attached to a sales order, the entire orchestration would begin with the tasks that are defined in your orchestration process. So uh, this can sound little confusing but your orchestration process is similar to your workflow which tells this is a step 1, 2, 3, 4 that the order needs to go through. So now this step 1, 2, 3, 4 are typically called as tasks. So step 1 is a task, step 2 is another task. So that way each is a task. Okay, And each task in turn would move to external interface layer which invokes the corresponding web services. So through internal external interface layer it calls the corresponding order fulfillment systems. Now this fulfillment system can be an external fulfillment system or Oracle Cloud itself. For example if you want to ship an order or you want to do a reserve step the call goes from order management cloud to the inventory cloud. In case if it is any other external system, then the call goes to that external system in the form of a web service. So from this uh, order, whatever orders are created, it, it goes to the SN and launch service. And this SN and launch service tells or decides which orchestration process needs to be assigned to. So any order that is created needs to be assigned to an orchestration process. If this assign and launch is not properly defined, then either it can go to a default process or sometimes no process is assigned against it. So it all completely depends on how good you define your assign process. So any errors in, in, in the assign process, then there would not be any orchestration process that would be uh, stamped against your order. So you should always have you should always have at least one or more orchestration process stamped against your uh, order. And orchestration is orchestration process is similar to your workflow where we have a list of tasks. We have uh, uh, let's say schedule is one task, reserve is one task, inventory, ship receive. So these are different tasks that we can have. So all together uh, defined in a proper fashion makes a meaningful sense for your orchestration process. Okay, and at the same time, you can have a business event that is being raised from here. You can you can notice the business events. So when we uh, when we have an orchestration process, uh, we can define few business events which are provided in build by Oracle. Uh, uh, Custom business events, I don't think so, are provided or supported as of uh, today. Uh, we have some pre-built uh, business events. From there on, we can uh, connect to any other external systems based on this business event. And once the orchestration process is uh, uh, invoked, then it goes based on your task services. One by one, all the tasks are executed. Okay, And from there on, each task is invoked uh, to an external interface uh, layer. Okay, and each interface layer can be uh, an external one or an internal one. For example, inventory cloud is an is treated as an external system itself because this is on, based on the concept of SOA. Right? This is a different system altogether. But Oracle has provided pre-built integration between your inventory cloud and your order management cloud. In case you do not want to use inventory cloud of Oracle and you want to use some other inventory cloud, then from here onwards you will direct it to your endpoint of your uh, custom or your third party inventory cloud there. From there on you can invoke the service there. And uh, here uh, we have uh, something very uh, important called as the uh, Oracle business rules or the middleware. And uh, Oracle business rules is the underlying middleware technology in SOA which defines or 
tells what transformation rules need to be applied and what orchestration process needs to be selected and at the same time these business rules are used in defining your orchestration process so writing rules in oracle business uh, oracle business rules is the uh, i would say the toughest challenge in uh, do as of today uh, because it sounds uh, technical very much technical in terms of soa and uh, you know the very language and the uis are uh, look technical and feel technical so this could be an area of uh, challenge for most of us with uh, a functional background that could look as a challenge uh, however we can uh, write simple rules uh, some you know with the help of some documentation we'll we'll have a, a more focus on this oracle business rules so that we'll be very comfortable defining our own orchestration processes or assigning the orchestration processes so for example uh, let's say if i if i create a sales order and submit uh, how would i know that would be a standard flow or a back to back flow or a return order flow how do we know that but your orchestration should tell that right um, the, correct the orchestration itself is defined in oracle business rules point number 1 okay and point number 2 how would the order know that this particular flow should be kicked in getting it so the return order flow will have a uh, a flag saying that you know if this has a return order flag then i'll pick up the orchestration order from there orchestration from there onwards so this particular thing should be assigned to it okay if an item is a back to back enabled then i'll i'll have a flag for that so uh, once we uh, enter the order management uh, part of it uh, we have uh, we can create an uh, implementation project uh, saying that this is order management one and make sure that there are no spaces within the code uh, this is one uh, thing i would uh, request everyone to remember any time when you see something called as code or api code or whatever it is make sure that you do not give any spaces there sometimes it may happen that temporarily it accepts your request but create problem somewhere else you see this as part of efa you see this as part of implementation sorry orchestration process definition anywhere you see a uh, code or api code or api name or something most of these are automatically generated i mean the minute you enter order management from probably and do a tab out it, it is automatically generated and in case if it is not generated you can create you can change the name but make sure that you never give any spaces or uh, blank spaces between these things and you give a description for it and the status and then assign to and start date and then go ahead with the implementation project and once we have the implementation project right we have the list of tasks uh, that are available and uh, we have uh, order management uh, as part of it and we have pricing when you expand this and see what order management has we have pricing as part of it and uh, what to be included and what uh, what not to be included and you can always have a, a combination coming in for example i don't want uh, pricing setups to see as part of this implementation project then unchecking this would not uh, list out any pricing uh, you know, setups coming in there and this keeps changing this uh, offerings uh, like for example here you see material management logistics mml uh, this was a uh, this was there as part of r11 and when it came to artable this is uh, obsolete and they have come up with something else so there there been some changes here in and around here uh, this area so uh, once you create an auto management right, uh, this is this is how it looks like how the implementation project uh, looks like and uh, we have this uh, the earlier slide talks about what all needs to be present as part of your implementation uh, project and this slide shows what are all added to your uh, implementation project okay uh, so going on to the next slide if you expand what all the tasks added so most almost all the uh, implementation projects that you create have these three things in common one thing is a common applications configuration and another thing is a common and instead of order management probably it will have its own uh, module name and the basic definition of the uh, module and the next thing would be something like an otba kind of thing the reports for extensions which we call as uh, extensions uh something like a report or a business intelligence report or a groovy code or something those kind of things will be handled there so common application configurations are those uh, 
things which are basically needed for defining your enterprise structure, BU, and all those things come under your common applications configuration. And common auto management setups, we need we have something like your uh, items, um, and the, the under items you have probably UAM and uh, uh, customers being uh, defined here. We have something called this uh, defined auto management customers and all. So these are the upstream flows that are uh, needed, which are not as part of OEM, but which are very much needed to create an order or go ahead with the uh, auto cache.